Hallelujah. 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 You may be seated, Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For Yahweh has truly been tugged unto Israel. Yes. We don't thank him enough. We do not take the time as we should to just look back and see where Yahweh has brought us from. As from the beginning, the very of all things, we have seen and we have read on the accounts of Yerushalayim, Yisra'ya, coming out of Mizraim. Have we not? Do we, can, can we apply that to our lives today? Have Yahweh have brought us out of the mock, the mire? How he has delivered us from our sins and our iniquities? And then pay the ultimate price in the offering of Yahshua HaMashiach. Why? That we may be able to come unto the throne of Abba Yahweh boldly. Boldly before the throne and ask anything. Hallelujah. He will give it unto us. When we have the heart, the mind of Yahshua HaMashiach, we will ask the right thing. We will. Not being led by our flesh or by our emotions, but we will know what is required of Yahweh, and then we'll ask accordingly to his many blessings. Hallelujah. This is the, the beginning or the time of um, Pentecost. Hallelujah. We have gathered ourselves together on this day. This is a Shabbat. There should be no labor on this time. Our minds should be set upon what Yahweh's will is on these past days. Hallelujah. If you would turn to the Midbar Numbers uh, 28, chapter 28, verse 26, I want to begin reading 26 to, to uh, verse 31. And then I want to somewhat take a turn because I want us to understand what Yahweh desires us to bring unto him of the first of our labors. Not only talking about us bringing an offering, not just any kind of offering, but an offering that is perfect and that is acceptable unto Yahweh. We find these days, many times we come, our lives not fully being um, drawn by the Ruach HaKodesh, and we just bring anything into the tabernacle, unto the body of Abba Yahweh, and it should not be so. We should bring unto Yahweh that which is mature, that which is acceptable, that which is perfect, and we must understand that this walk in Yahshua HaMashiach, it is a process. That the first year of our labor, the fruit may not be just right. It may not be to its fullest potential. We have seen that even with the fruit trees here, with the peach trees. The first year, there were a few blooms, not much fruit, the fruit was small. But yet as the fruit matured, the roots become in ground, the next year they were yet a bit stronger. Still got much, not much fruit, but yet we got more fruit than the first year, did we not? And then on the third year, I remember that third year, that fourth year, there was much in abundance. And there's something about that third year, that process of time, that those trees of the trees are able to grow and to grip themselves into the ground. We should grip ourselves into the foundation that Yahshua HaMashiach has laid. Why? That we may produce the fruit that is acceptable sure. and the fruit that is mature yes. unto Abba Yahweh that every year there's a progression and that we can bring even more of abundance yes. and more of a perfect fruit unto yes. Yahweh. Does Yahweh require that? Yes. Does he demand that? Yes, yes he does. Yes. And we will get to that as I proceed on in this teaching tonight. Yes. We should not bring this anything before Abba Yahweh because he will not accept anything. No, he's not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We should desire to bring even a better and a more perfect offering every year unto our Yahweh. So let us begin reading in Numbers, Ben Midbar, chapter 28, verse 26. It says, also in the day of the first fruits, the first fruits, that which we bring unto Yahweh, out of what he has given us, he has given us much, Israel. We look at the land of Israel, yes, the people, yes, we yes. at one time possessed the best of land. Sure we did. And the best of, if I may say, the material things. Sure. But what has happened? Yes, come on. Because we have sinned. And because we have set our Yahweh on the back burner, sure we, 
those things have been removed from the house and we have been scattered. Sure. But does Yahweh change? Sure. Doesn't he require yet the same offering? Sure. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Yes, Has he not still in this hour given us, Yisrael, much? Yes, much? He has given us Yahshua HaMashiach. Yes. Even at this time in Numbers, at this reading, Yahshua HaMashiach was not yet given. Yes, yes. So we have been given in us aspect even more. Why? Because the dawn has been shed, the offering has been made, that we can come before Abba Yahweh yes. and bring what he desires. Yes. What fruits should we bring him? Yes. Fruits of joy? Yes. Fruits of Ahava? Yes. It should be much in abundance. And not only that, as I will continue, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. It is so much. Yes. He commanded us to bring the fruit yes. to the Kohen, yes. the high priest, Yahshua HaMashiach being our high priest. It says in a basket. Yes. Not in a bag, not in a paper bag, not just any vessel, yes. but the scripture says a basket. Why a basket? Yes, beautiful, beautiful. Just think about that for a moment. Why a basket? Yes. It's so simple, if you look at the structure, but yet so beautiful. Sure it is. There are grasses that are used for baskets, certain mm -hmm. types of wood that are woven and intermingled. And a basket, it, it can sustain a whole lot of weight and the way it's constructed. Let us keep in mind that that basket is the mind of Yahshua HaMashiach. Yes, uh, come on. The Ru'ah, all right? And that we are putting these fruits of the labor that Yahweh has invested into Yisrael in this basket. Yes. And the only way those fruits want to be preserved for a time is in that basket, in the basket. The That's protection, so the Torah of Yahweh, the strength of that being woven in our minds and our lavelle, that we're able to carry these fruits and offer them unto Almighty Yahweh. Let me continue. Also in the days of the first fruit, when you bring a new grain offering to Yahweh, after your weeks be out, the ending of the week. Yes, come on. And it says, you shall have a Kodesh convocation, and you shall do no servile work. But you shall offer the burnt offerings for a sweet savor unto Almighty Yahweh. Yes. Yahweh desires a sweet smelling savor. Yes, he does. What do we bring unto him? Do we bring to him the incense of the smell of flesh and of rotten things? Or, we do, or do we bring the first of the offerings unto Yahweh, present unto him burnt with fire with the praises of Almighty yes, Yahweh, so that he may receive yes, yes. the sweet-smelling savor? Yes. No one wants to smell something that is stunk and that is rotten. No. Do you? No. No, we want, he, Yahweh wants a sweet savor offering yes. unto him. Yes. And he said, two young bull oxes, the ram, um, seven lambs, it says, of the first year. Sure. And a grain offering of flour mingled with oil, three tenths deals on the bullock, two tenths deals on the ram. A several tenth deal on one lamb throughout the seven lambs. And it says, and the one kid of goat to make an atonement before you. You must sure. understand this is the yes, process sir. of the offering that it took at this time. Sure of the first for offering unto Abba Yahweh. And it says, you shall offer them beside the continual burnt offering. See, our offering that we offer unto Yahweh, it should be continual. Sure they must. They should really, they should never end, Israel. Yeah. Our praises, our todah unto Yahweh, whether it's with a loud voice, yeah. or whether you're just meditating on what Yahweh has done for you in that day, it should be always a continual burnt offering unto Yah. Sure. And it says, and his great offerings, and their drink offering, your animals are to be without blemish. So anything that we bring unto Yahweh as an offering in this process, it must be without blemishes, right? Yeah. 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 It must be without blemish. So as we look at our lives, as we judge our intents, we judge ourselves, our conduct, do we find this perfect offering unto Yahweh? Or do we find the lambs being mingled and spotted? Or are the fruits... Are they decaying with worms and things of that nature? What have you brought into Abba Yahweh tonight? What have you brought in your basket? What have you put in your lamb and in your mind? Hallelujah. Don't you know, even if you think about it through history, it's almost a culture. If you look at old pictures or if you go into a um, mother's, old mother's house, a, a grandmother's house, you would see fruit in a basket. You see it everywhere. When you go to a fruit stand, what do they have? They up the price a little bit. Well, they give you a basket with the fruit in it. Yeah. Is that not right? Yeah. So let us present our offering 
having the basket that Yahweh do require concerning Israel. Let's turn to Gal Galatia, Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. Hallelujah, Yahweh. That's all right. Hallelujah. Lead us and guide us, Abba Yahweh, wherever yeah. way you want us to yeah. go. Yes. Yeah. We must understand this Bakor, this yeah. Rishon, being the first fruit sure unto Almighty Yahweh. We have planted our zero, our seeds. Yes. Yeah. And depending on how we have cultivated, how we have worked the ground, how we have fertilized the trees or the plants in the ground, what you put into your garden or into your orchard or your vineyard, it will be manifest in its fruit, the Israel. And one thing that I have looked um, in doing this study that we will find primary or rich or of first over 1,500 times in the King David Version of the Torah. So there has to be a meaning, or there's a purpose of bringing the first unto you. Sure it is. The first. That is very important. Not the second, not the third, not the remnant of the harvest. Sure. But he deserves the first and the best of the harvest. Yeah. Why? Because without him, there would be no harvest. Sure. Without him, there would be no land, there would be no rich. Yeah. Without Yahshua HaMashiach, there would be no fertile ground. That his zira, his word, his Torah, his Dabar could be planned. Sure. So you just think about that. How yes, yes. step by step, stage by stage, we have grown, we have matured. Sure. So what is expected of us? More and better fruit. Yes. That those of us that have been in this way, in this path for many years, where's the fruit? Yes. That those of us that have proclaimed that we have stayed in the Torah, we have studied, and we can walk thereby. Where's the fruit? Yes, yes, yes. Your labor will show forth in the presentation of your fruit. Your fruit represents your labor. Why do you think Yahweh has invested so much in Israel? Because his fruit, his Israel, represents his labor. And in the time of the end when he gathered the house of Israel, this is what he wants to see. His labor. All that he has put into it, brought to him in abundance, overflowing, that his basket may be full. That's beautiful. I like that. Should we desire that? Israel? Yeah. You just think about that. You're bringing an offering before your Abad, the creator, the maker of all things, the one that has delivered the house of Israel from bondage, the one that keeps you day by day. Oh, Give you breath. Yes. Every breath you take comes from yes. Yahweh. It seems like a small thing, doesn't it? But yet it's a great thing because if there's no breath, there's no life. We could not live. So what have we brought unto Yahweh? Consider those things, Israel. We are people that do not consider. We live day by day, and yet the small elements, we kind of put them to the side. We should give Yahweh told God for all things. Hallelujah. Told Yahweh. Talking about the first fruits, Israel. What Yahweh desires for his people. What he wants his people to bring it to him. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. I want to be reading. It says, This I say then, walk. Hala, to walk. Pace yourself. I want every step to be orchestrated, to be aligned perfectly. He said, This I say then, walk in the Ruach. Think of this as being the first furrow for your planting of your zero, your seed. We must walk in the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh, and you shall not fulfill, it says, the lust of the flesh. I believe that. We must understand that in Torah there are many examples of trees. There are trees that produce the life of Yahweh, and there are trees that produce no life, Yet they seem from a distance to have this beauty and this luster. But yet when you go to partake of the, of the fruit, there are none. And there are trees that produce wickedness. If we were think of the shad. Seemingly there's no fruit. But inside it's barren. It's waste. There's nothing that we can partake of that will give us strength. Yeah, it's beautiful. Something like that. 
when we walk in the rule of the flesh or in the spirit of the flesh, those are the kind of things that we will produce. We may, from the outside, look like there's a luster or there is a Kodesh nature about us, but yet we, we cannot produce any fruit. Yes. We're producing fruit, but yet it is fruit of the flesh. Lust of the flesh, concupiscence, the things that displease Abba Yahweh. Is that what Yahweh, is that what he wants us to bring before him as a first fruit? But yet many times those are our first fruits. Why? Because that is what we plant continually. You must start at the beginning. What have we planted? What are we watering? What are we cultivating? Is it wickedness? Are we plowing up wickedness? Or are we plowing and bringing forth fruits of of um, Todah and of joy unto Almighty Yahweh. He says, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. He said, for the flesh lusts against the Ruach. Yes. And the Ruach against the flesh. Yes. And these are contrary one yes. to another. So what is it saying? What are you saying, Zakei Yaramiah? Yes. Yes. You cannot have both. Sure. Simple. You're either on this side of the orchard yes. or you're on the other side. You're not going to straddle a fence. You cannot get sweet and bitter waters out of the same system. No, Nor can you get bitter or sweet fruit from the same tree. So if your fruit's bitter tonight, it's because of that which you have planted. You have planted of the bitter things. Yeah. And you are reaping a harvest of bitter things. But if you plant in the Ruah and not in the flesh, you will reap the sweet things unto Almighty Yahweh and the fruits that He desires. These are contrary one to another, so that you cannot do the things that you would or the things that you should unto Almighty Yahweh. That's all right. But it says this in verse 18, but if you be led of the Ruach, very important, we must be led in this hour of the Ruach of yes. Yahweh. Not by our emotions, not by our flesh, not by the things we think are tough or the things we think are right, but being led by the Ruach. He says, then you are not under the Torah. Or the Torah is not um, one that weighs you down. The weight of it is just so much to bear, to carry. But because you walk after the Ruach, you're able to live the Torah. The Torah is not one that keeps you in a bondage that you must do or you have to yeah. do. But it puts you in a place when you're doing right before Yahweh that you want to do. So it's not a weight. The Torah is not a weight unto us. Verse 19. But he said, no, the works of the flesh are manifest. These are the fruits of the flesh. These are the things that the flesh will manifest. Which are these? Idolatry. Mm -hmm. Fornication. Being removed from Abba Yahweh. Yes. Allowing the things of the world to, um, or desiring the things of the world and not desiring Yahweh. Fornication. Uncleanliness. Lasciviousness. Yes. A lust that is so strong and so wicked. Lasciviousness. Yes. Idolatry. Witchcraft. Yes. Calling upon other gods, other spirits. Yes. Hatreds. Variants. These are the fruits of the flesh. Yes. When you till the flesh and you feed the flesh, these are the fruits that you are going to get. Sure. Variants. Emulations. Wrath. Yes. Strife. Is there strife in the house? Yes. Are we warring one against another? Seditions, heresies, envies, murderings, drunkenness. Is that among the house of Israel? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You can get to fool yourself all you want to. This is pointing to us tonight. The first fruits. Are these what we bring it unto Yahweh? Yeah. If these are the things that we are producing, that we have planted the wrong seed, we're cultivating. Not in the Torah of Yahweh, but outside of His will. Yes. Drunkenness, revelings, as such like, of that which I tell you before also, as I've told you in time past. We have been warned time and time again. Hallelujah. This morning we have been warned. Last week we was warned. Last year, year before last. When are we going to mature condition of Yahweh? Where are we going to bring the fruit of abundance and of fullness before Yahweh? That those of us that have been in this long enough, we should be of full maturity. And I will get into that concerning the fig tree. There's a certain type of fig tree that produces fruit on the first year, 
the second year, and on the third year. Yeah. And then on that third year is the most productive and the most lush of the fruit of that kind. Right. But it took a stage of maturity. There are, there are us that have been in this long enough, we should be of maturity. Of that we're able to bring the fruits before Abba Yahweh. That we can instruct others what must be done. That we have the understanding and the knowledge and the revelation that we can help a, 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 a hope. Yes. That they may be brought up to the same maturity. That's the way it should be in the house yes. of Israel. Yes. But because we are led by the flesh. We have allowed the things of Yahweh to be shunned. We have allowed that. Hallelujah. And we have been warned time and time again. It says in verse 21, That which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of Almighty Yahweh. We're not making it in condition. Yes, Yahweh, we're not going to make it in any other way. We cannot bring the offerings of the fruits or the labors of this flesh, and it be acceptable unto Yahweh. It's not going to work. No, but we must bring the first fruits of that which Yahweh has given us in abundance. And he has given us much possession, much erit, much land. He has given us his Torah, much work. Given us much time. Hallelujah. To do what is necessary that we may bring unto Yahweh that which is acceptable in his sight. Hallelujah. Verse 22. He said, but the fruit of the Ruach, these are the fruit of the Ruach. This is what we should pre be producing as a people unto Yah. But the fruit of the Ruach, the peri of the Ruach is Ahava. Ahava, not hatred. Ahava. Yes. Yet when you have the perfect Ahava of Yahweh, then yet you produce perfect hatred. And what is that hatred? It is hatred for the things that displease Yahweh. Yeah. That we not allow anything to come into our body, into our mind, into this basket to, to, um, to cause the fruit to rot or to be a blemish. Yes, joy. Where's the joy? Have we brought the joy? Do we have joy in our baskets tonight? Joy. Shalom. The peace of Almighty Yahweh. Do we have peace, the shalom of Yahweh, in our baskets tonight? Long suffering. I don't see much. Long suffering in the baskets tonight? What do you have in your basket? Hallelujah. What are you carrying with you? What is in your mind? What is in your leg, your heart? Long suffering. Gentleness. Gentleness. My. Gentleness, y'all. I want that. I won't be a hypocrite, house of Israel. Yeah. These are the kind of fruits that we should bring before Yahweh. Yes. Hallelujah. And we can stand much improvement. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Much improvement. Yeah. So this year, we may look in our basket, the fruits are small, and they, you know, this, this is our first fruits unto Abba Yahweh. Let's not do it again the following year for this one of Yah. Let us grow up. Yeah. We've been children long enough. Doing childish things. Yeah. It's time for us to mature. That we can bring what is, what is unto Yahweh which he delights. Gentleness. Tongue. Faithfulness. Having the amuna, And not only having that, but acting in amuna, By which we can be faithful in all things unto Almighty Yahweh. Yes. 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 It says. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Verse 23, meekness, temperance, against which there is no Torah. There's no Torah. Nothing. When you have these fruits, these things, yes. it doesn't take a ladder to keep you in that path or to keep everything in restraint because you've been led by the Ruach. Sure we are. Hallelujah. So allow yourself to be led by the Ruach, yes. conditions of Yahweh. And produce these fruits. Come on, meekness, temperance. Yeah. Against there is no Torah. You can have a much. You can have that in abundance in your basket. Yahweh will not reject that. There's no Torah against that. There's no limits. We can bring all that unto Abba Yahweh. Verse twenty-four, and it says, "And they that are Messiahs, it says they have crucified, they have killed, 
They have uh, crucified the flesh with the affections and the lusts. Well, what are you saying? Well, the things of the flesh have been crucified. You have cut down the trees that produce the malice. You have cut down the trees that produce the hatred. You have burned the fields that have yeah. worked all these unrighteous things before Abba Yahweh, and we have started afresh and anew. Yeah. Because when we are led by the Ruach, we will not exemplify these kind of fruits. Yeah. But we will present or exemplify the fruits that are a delight unto Almighty Yahweh. Yes, we will. Verse 25. He said, if we live in the Ruach, he said, let us also walk in the Ruach. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Let us not be desirous of, light, light of, excuse me, of vain splendor. The things that surround us. The things that the world count as being um, highly rated in the nations. Sure. Of vain splendor. Yeah. He said provoking one another, envying one another. This, that should not be our desire that we possess things that someone will look upon us and say, man, he got that. I wish I had that. That's right. Or, he's got more than me. Yeah. I want to get more than him. That, that should not be amongst the house yeah. of Israel. Yeah. Where's the fruit tonight? Have we brought the fruit of Yahweh in a basket before him? Yeah. Without spot, without blemish, without any such thing. A mature fruit. Not little hard fruits that when you bite into, you sense the, the sourness and the distaste. When you bite into a fruit, you at once expect, expect the, the sweetness of it. Yes. But that makes the fruit that much bitter if you expect sweetness and you bite into one that is bitter. Yeah. That's right. It doesn't fit your palate. And it's not going to fit the palate of Almighty Yahweh. He desires the first fruit condition of Yahweh, of his labor. And he has given the house of Israel, the Israel y'all, so much. So much that we are without excuse. So why have we come, um, if I may say, why have we come so low or under the point or under that which Yahweh commands us to bring unto him? Yes. Hallelujah. I brought Yahweh for the dawn yes, of Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. You better tell the Yah for the offer of Yahshua yeah. HaMashiach. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. 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 Because without that, there is no way. We will be able to, to bring that which is acceptable unto Yah. Without the Ruach, there is no way that we can meet the requirements of Abba Yahweh. No, we cannot. Yes. Without the Torah of Yahweh, as we study, as we walk thereby, without that, there is no way that we can bring anything acceptable before Yahweh. Why? Because Yahweh, He is so perfect. And perfect does not even fit His description. That He will not require us to bring Him anything less of his perfection. So what has he done? He's given us his Torah. He has poured out his Ruach in abundance. Hallelujah. We have heard enough of his Mishma, of his Siddhubah, that it should take us through into the Melkut. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What have we done with Hallelujah. Are we hiding his Torah, his Mishma, in our left? Or is the Torah, the Mitzvah of Yahweh, is just going in one ear, as they say, and going out of the other? Yes. We hear it, we read it, but we do not put it into practice, or like they say, into play. It's no good for us, if I may say, um, Zelke and Shimri, if we were in a basketball game or a football game, and yet you come to practice every day, you go through the steps and the routine, yet you do not apply it to the game. What use is that? Yes, yes. What use is that of Abu Yahweh to give his, his, his Dabar, his word of life? We hear it, we read it, but yet we do not apply it. Yeah. Unless we apply it to the of Yahweh, we'll not bring forth an abundant harvest. And that is what this time is about. We have brought the abundance, we have picked up the first of our fruits, and we have brought it up before Abu Yahweh. Oh. And I will repeat it again. Look in your basket. Examine your basket. Examine your left. Examine your mind, your left tonight. Those that are listening by via of live stream, what have we offered? What have we brought before the Kohen of Yah that he may offer? What have we brought before Yahshua HaMashiach tonight? Is it accepted unto Abba Yahweh? Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's take his Torah, his Mishra to heart. Kedusha to Yahweh. We've played long enough. Hallelujah. That at this time we cannot bring what is acceptable unto Abba Yahweh. Turn with me to Debram, Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 1. I want to begin reading. Hallelujah. Yahweh has given us so much conditions of Yahweh. Yeah. He's given us, and I want to use these terms, he's given us the fertilizer. Yeah. He's given us the land yeah. that we may till. Yes. He's given us the ruach, the rain, the water. Yeah. He's given us his son, Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. He's given us the zero yeah. ah. to plant. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right. Yes. So he has given us all that we need. All we have to do is just labor. And it should be a labor that is exciting. Yeah. A labor that is desirous. That we want to right. um, plant these seeds. Yeah. And apply all that Yahweh has given us yeah. to bring yeah. him the fruits. Yeah. Because he has given us something. Yes. A, a treasure and riches. and inheritance, Yisrael. Yeah. Sure. That in no other people, no other nations in the world, no matter what they may have materially, they will never have what Israel had. Israel has yes. in the ruach, Hallelujah. and what Yahweh has in store for the house of Israel, yes. if we will obey all His commandments. There's not any gold or any diamonds or anything that can compare unto that which which Yahweh has in store for Israel. So let us continue in the fight, in the press, and in the race conditions of Yahweh. Let us continue to plow. Let us not get weary in our gardens. Hallelujah. Let us not get weary in the orchards. But if your mind is on what is being produced and what will be produced, then it gives us something to work towards and to look forward to. Don't we look forward to the Melchizedek, the kingdom of Yahweh? Hallelujah. So let us be ones that are faithful in the vineyard of Almighty Yahweh. Faithful in the orchard. Faithful in the garden. That we can bring the best of the first fruits of the year before Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Is that not your desire tonight? That's my desire. Hallelujah. Did not Yahweh yes. give the best of his first fruit yes. for Yisrael? Yes. Yahshua HaMashiach yes. was not even perfect, yes. without spot, yes. without blemish, yes. without any such thing. Yes. Here's our example. Here's our example, Yisrael. Yes. Hallelujah. Let me begin reading. Concerning what we should bring before Yahweh because of what Yahweh has given unto Israel. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 1. And it shall be, when you, are, when you are come into the land, into the rich, that land that Yahweh has given us, the property, the place. Have not Yahweh given us a place? Yes. Yes. That place is in Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. Has not Yahweh given us protection? Yes. That protection is in Yahshua HaMashiach yeah. and His Dabar, His Word, His living Word. Yeah. Which Yahweh, your Almighty, gives you for an inheritance. He is our inheritance. Yes, hallelujah. The world didn't give Yahshua to me, and the world cannot take him away. Do you remember that song? Yeah. The world didn't give it, the world yeah. can't take it away. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it, the world cannot take it away. Yeah. That your Almighty gives to you for an inheritance. And possess it. Take it. Grab hold unto it. Don't let it go. And he said, dwell therein. Yes, we Do we find ourselves dwell, dwelling in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh? Yeah. Do we find ourselves in fixed in his Dabar, conditions of Yahweh? This is, this is an inheritance he has given the house of Israel. Yeah. He said that he has done a new thing. What is that? He had placed his Dabar, his Torah, his Mitzvah in our lips. Yes, yes. In our hearts, in our minds. Yes. Verse 2. That you shall take up the first of call, all the fruit of the earth, or that place, that inheritance, that land that Yahweh has given us, Israel. Yes, and He has given us much. Yes, sir. Did, he, did He not say that the meat? Was that one of the fruits that I read? Yes. Was that one of the fruits of the yes. Ruach? Yeah. Shall I inherit the Olam? Yes. yes. He said, the first of the fruits of the Olam, of the earth, which you shall bring of your land 
That which Yahweh has given us, that Yahweh our Almighty gives you. And he says, and shall put it in what? A basket, a tahir, or a shop, a basket, a basket. That's all right. Go ahead. So, I mean, that, that's some importance to me. Yeah. Yeah. It cannot be brought into the Kohen. We cannot bring these fruits or our offerings unto Yahweh any kind of way. There's a certain way he wants to, uh, us to bring it and to offer unto Yahshua. Offer unto the Kohen, and that is in a basket. That the fruits can be contained, that they get the right amount of air. Fruit must have air. That's part of the sustaining of the fruit. It must have air. It, can, it cannot be in a stale place or the fruit will rot quickly. That is one of the purposes of having the basket. Baskets, they allow the fruit or anything that's placed in it to breathe. It's not, it's not confined um, in a tight place where it cannot get any air. Yes. And shall go to the place, in a certain place, which Yahweh your servant ruler shall choose to place his, or shame his name there. Has not Yahweh chosen Yisrael, yeah. the house of Israel, yeah. the body, yeah. the zero, to place his name on our foreheads? Yeah. In this place, he has chosen, is, is not our body the buyer of Almighty Yahweh? Yeah. He has chosen us to yeah. place his Dabah, his word, for this yeah. Yahweh. Yeah. In these letters, in these minds, in these hearts. Oh, yeah. And you shall go to the Kohen. That shall be in those days and say unto him, see that's one thing we lack in this day. We do not want to go into the elders, into the Zalkain, unto the Kohen yes. of the sound. Yes. And say to him, I profess, I confess, yes. I admit this day to Yahweh our Abba that I have come into the country which Yahweh has swore to our Avat, our fathers, yes. for to give us. Verse 4. And the Kohen shall take the basket out of your hand, the fruit, the offering, the basket out of your hand, and set it down before the altar of Almighty Yahweh, your Abba. Yeah. Have we brought a basket that is desirable to oh be placed upon the altar of Almighty Yahweh? Is Yahshua looking at what we brought before the Abba in disgust? Or is it a basket full of beautiful and perfect fruit? And you shall speak and say before Yahweh, your Abba. And this is a confession. Confessing our faults, one unto another. Should not we do that? Yes. Yes. That the effectual fervent prayer of those that are sadiq, they will avail much. Yes. It says here, you shall speak and say before Yahweh, your Abba. A Syrian ready to perish was my father. That was our background. An Assyrian, ready to perish, without possession, without obtaining and possessing the riches of Almighty Yahweh. And he went down to Egypt and sojourned there with a few. Did we not hear that? Yes. Do you recall that earlier in service? Yes. That we were few in number yes. when we entered into the bondage of Israel, but yet we come out great. A few in number, and became there a nation, great, mighty, and populous. And he says, and the Egyptians evil entreated us, and afflicted us, and laid upon us hard bondage. Before we was delivered, before Yahshua HaMashiach come into our Levim, and we were enlightened by the drawing of the Ruach of Abba Yahweh, were we not in bondage? Yes, hallelujah. Was it the weight of the world just too much for us to bear? We thought we were having fun, but yet in all reality, we were just fooling ourselves. We were in bondage to a, a taskmaster without any kind of a haba or any kind of gentleness. Like they said, they rode us hard like a horse without water to our doom. That's, that's what the world does do unto us. When we dwell in this land of Egypt, that is what is produced. Bondage. Harsh labor. And he looked on our affliction and our labor and our oppression. Verse 8. And it says, And Yahweh, he brought us forth out of Egypt. It was not yourself. It was Yahweh that brought us forth. It was not the prayers of your mama, of your daddy. It was not them crying out. 
It was Yahweh. It was Yahweh that brought us forth out of Egypt. It says with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm and with great terribleness and with signs and with wonders. Don't you sometimes look back and you wonder how did I make it over? How did I come this far? Hallelujah. If it had not been for Yahweh on our side, where would we be? If it had not been for the cleansing of the dawn of Yahshua HaMashiach, where would I be? If it had not been for the rock of Yahweh drawing me, there was something that kept drawing me, where would I be? Hallelujah. We still yet be in bondage, and dead many of us. In bondage, our sins and our iniquities taking hold of us. But we could not be free. Hallelujah. Yahweh has made us free, Israel. Right, we should no longer be in bondage by our sins and by our transgressions, by our lusts. Hallelujah. He has given us all things that pertain unto our life and live in Kodesh in the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh. And it says in verse 9 that he has brought us into this place and he has given us this land, even the land that flows with milk and honey. Are we there, condition of Yahweh? Are we in the land that flows with milk and honey? Do not the sweetness of Yahweh flow. Do not the water, the crisp, clean water flow in our Ruach and our Levim. Hallelujah. Why should we not give Yahweh of the first fruits of, our, of his labor and what he has given us? Verse 10. And now behold, I have brought the first fruits of the land. All that you have done, Yahweh. I look back and I wonder how I made it over. How your Ruach has brought me through. You giving me your Hava. You giving me your mercies. You giving me your loving kindness, your patience of Yahweh. Why would we not want to bring a perfect offering before Abba Yahweh at this time? Why would we not? He has given us all things. All things conditions of Yahweh. That we will be a people and a nation that grow strong. That we are reassured in the foundation, our roots dug deep in the Torah of the Bible of Yahweh. That nothing can move us. That we will be a tree that cannot be moved. Even when there's dry, our roots are deep enough that we are watered by the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh. Still yet in drought, when there are others that are around us that are not of the Ruach of the world, that are perishing, that are falling, that are dying, yet we are able to produce the fruits unto Almighty Yahweh, that they will look, even in time of famine, they will look at us and say, how are they being preserved? Yes. How are they still yet able to bear fruit? Yes. Hallelujah. Why? Because we walk in the Torah unto the Bible of Almighty Yahweh. I have brought the first fruits of the land that which have given me, Yah, which you, O Yahweh, has given me, and it says, and you shall set it before Yahweh, your Abba. Yeah. Are we ready? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. To set our baskets before Almighty Yahweh. Yeah. Are we ready to present our letter, our mind, unto Almighty Yahweh? Yes, I am. Have we produced the right and the certain, the right kinds of fruit before Almighty Yahweh? Yeah. Yahweh, your Abba, and he says what? To worship. To Barak Yahweh. Yes. To Toda Yahweh. Give Toda unto Yahweh. Hallelujah. Toda unto Almighty Yahweh. Before Yahweh your Almighty. Verse 11. And he said, And you shall rejoice in every tough thing. You shall rejoice. In what? Come on. Everybody. And we shall rejoice in what? Every. Every tough thing which Yahweh your Abba has given unto you. He has given us so much, our children of Yah, house of Israel, yeah. so much that we should be ones that are full of rejoicing, full of Toda. That should not cease to come forth out of our mouths, Toda, praises unto Yahweh. Has given to you, and what? And to your house, your it. You and the Levite and the stranger that is among you. Hallelujah. Even of the things we do not understand for this of Yah. Yahweh has given it unto us so much in abundance. Why? That we can bring unto him 
of the first fruits of the land of the labor which he has given unto the house of Israel. Isn't that beautiful? Hallelujah. How are we in our ruach tonight? Hallelujah. Go to Yahweh. Is it Yahweh time? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I told you Yahweh that he is showing just what is in me. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. He has given us time. He has given us time. Yes. And as we turn me to Matitia, Matthew chapter 21, verse 18. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. There's a maturity that we must have. Yes. Yes, we were once children. We see that in life. Children. We produce children. We watch them grow. We watch them mature. Their understanding, their learning, their capabilities, their strength. Yes. They become stronger. Yes. They become smarter, wiser. Sure. Do they not? Yes. So should we as being Israel, those that are listening, Israel. Yes. Yes. It's time out for us to be doing or continue in the childish thing. Yes. There should be a progression. Sure. Always. Yes. Hallelujah. Every day, every moment, we should be progressing. Sure we must. It says, now in the morning, as he returned into the city, he hung me, Yahshua hung me. This is concerning the barren fig tree. Mm -hmm. And then he saw a fig tree in the way, and he came to it. The rock of Yahshua has come into the house, into the body of Yahweh tonight. He's walking amongst us. Hallelujah. What does he see? Does he see a fig tree today? House of Israel, those that listen. The rock of Yahweh, the two or three gathered, and there he is in the midst. He's among us. He desires of the fruit of the labor. What do we have to offer? Are we a tree full of leaves? We look beautiful, but yet no fruit. Or are we a tree that is dead? Nothing, no leaves. Which tree are you tonight? And he saw a tree in the way, and he came to it. And found, it says what? Nothing. Nothing thereon, but leaves only. Leaves only. That's it. When I looked at that tree, or when he looks at this tree, he's, you know, when you look at a tree that's full of leaves and it's just luscious looking, yeah. especially when you're a little hungry yeah, so and you want to take a bite of, of anything, basically, if you've been sojourning or journeying, mm -hmm. and you see something and you know by the looks of this tree there just must be some fruit that I can partake of. Something that will give me life and give me strength to press on in my journey. But yet, when you dig into that bush, you move the branches away, yeah. you dig through the leaves, and nothing. nothing. Well, what would that anger you? Yeah. Here this tree is. Yeah. See, we at the house of Israel, we must understand, we, a lot of times, most of the time, we have a cloak of Sadiq of righteousness, mm -hmm. but yet we have no fruit. Yeah. We look tough from the outside, or to the eye, yeah. physically. Yeah. We have our dresses all the way to the ground, our head coverings. Yeah. The men, the Zalkane, they have their coverings on. You look at that and people look at that, that must be of Yah. But yet, where's the fruit? Yes, yes. We steep in rituals and, 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 and material things. And we want to say that this is the moving of Yah. You should have these things. But yet, in possessing things, there's no fruit of the Ruach. Yes, that's all right. But leaves only and said to it, he said to the tree, now, I, I, was, I would have something to say if I walked out to a fruit tree and there was nothing on it. He said to it, let no fruit grow on you henceforth forevermore. And presently, the fig tree withered away. Yes, the yes. fig tree died. Oh all the greenery, all the lushness of that tree was withered away. Why? Because there was no, it's no good. To let the tree live, because why did not produce any fruit? Don't you know that we are dead, Israel? When we are not producing fruit. Oh, we can look tough on the outside. We can look good, if I may say, on the outside. 
We can pretend all we want to, but we're yet dead. The leaves were just a veneer. What we carry on us is just a veneer if we do not possess in our baskets, in our lives, in our heart, the fruit of Yah, the fruit of joy, the fruit of long suffering, of Ahava, meekness, being content before Almighty Yahweh. And it says, and his discipline, the disciples, they saw it and they marveled. You know, even as I was doing this study, this reading, my mind somewhat went back as I was studying this. If you recall when we first began this teaching this evening, I talked about the tree concerning the tree without fruit. Yes, yes. And many, all the time, when you have a tree that is not bearing, that tree is not of Yah. That's the tree. You can say what you want to. Because when there's a tree of the zero of Yahweh, it must and it will produce fruit. So if we find these trees, these things in our lives that are there, it seemingly looks good, it looks nice, but yet there's no fruit. Don't be fooled. It's not of Yahweh. There's no fruit in that. You're not going to be able to eat of that and live. And with that in mind, let me read on. Why? Why? Because Yahshua, he cursed that tree and the tree with it. We should curse those kind of things in our lives. The things that spring forth. Yeah. That do not produce fruit. Yeah. The wheat, yeah. which is not wheat, it's yeah. just shaft as it spring forth. Did not, was not it burned? Was not the wheat, I mean the shaft gathered and burned? Yeah. Was it not destroyed? Yes. Well, yeah. so should it be with the things in our lives. Yeah. And I walk with Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. We have these weeds or these plants that, that come forth in some kind of way that almost look identical to sure. that which should produce the fruit, but yet produce no fruit. Kill it. Yeah. Curse it. In the name of Yah. Destroy it. Why? Because it's just putting more weight upon you. And it's keeping you from moving on in Yahshua. So this is what he did. It said, the disciples saw and then Mar was saying, How soon the fig tree didn't wither away. And Yahshua answered and said to them, Now listen. He said, Surely I say to you. Now we quote many a times concerning uh, if we have the imuna of the grain of mustard seed, yeah. we can say unto this mountain, therefore be removed. But we should have this same power when these things spring forth in our gardens and our orchard that are not of Yahweh yeah. that don't produce any yeah. fruit. We should cast those things off. We should get rid of those things. We should destroy those things. Let me read on. He said, if you have imuna, faith, and doubt not, he said, you shall say, he said, you shall not only do this, which he had done, you not only be one to weed out or take out those things that do not produce the fruit of Yah, the period of Yahweh. You shall not only do this which I have done to the fig tree, but also if you should say to the mountain, now we get to the mountain, yeah. be you removed and be you cast into, into the sea and it shall be done. So if we cannot eradicate the small things out of our lives that do not produce the fruit and the strength of Yahweh. How are we going to say unto the, the big things, unto the trials, unto the things that come our way, the mountain, be removed? It takes a moon out conditions of Yahweh to do either or. We must be one that are not slack, but we must be those that continually work our gardens, work our vineyards, that they may look their best. Don't you desire that? Yeah. Well, wouldn't it be undeserving for you to work hard in the garden? You look back, you don't see the rewards of the labor. Yeah. The rewards of your work. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yahweh, He is not going to have that in the end of all things. Yeah. I believe that. He's going to have yeah. His basket full of fruit. That which he has started from the beginning, the very shut of all things. Yeah. At the end, he shall gather all his fruit. Yes, yes, no doubt about it. Hallelujah. Into the storage place, into his basket. And what is he going to do? What do you think he's going to do? He's going to admire it. He's going to partake of it. Because this is Yahweh's labor. So we as being in condition, we have a labor also that we must do. And we must finish it. Turn with me to Lucas. Luke chapter 13, verse 6. This is another example of the fig tree. It says in Lucas chapter 13, verse 6. It said, Yahshua spoke also this parable. 
It says, a certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Did we not see the example of that? And what I just read in my TTI? Yes. Yes. Verse 7. And he said to the dresser or the caretaker of his vineyard, Behold, now I want you to take key, take ear to this. He said, These three years I come seeking fruit. How many years have Yah, Yahshua HaMashiach, come to our vineyard seeking fruit, conditions of Yah? Beautiful. One year, two years, Beautiful. three years, five years, some of us 10, 20 years. Beautiful. Where's the fruit? Beautiful. Where's the fruit? Where's the maturity? Beautiful. Three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree. And there's a little article uh, I want to read concerning this because in the, at this time it was served with just any kind of fig tree. It wasn't an exact fig tree like what we have here today that produces fruit and then the fruit drops off. But there's a certain type of fruit, fig tree that produced fruit and the fruit remained. Beautiful. And then the next year the fruit right. remained. Yes. But yet every time the fruit come on that tree, the next year it was even stronger and more of abundance. Beautiful. This Beautiful. is an example of what Yahweh desires in the house of Israel. Yeah. But even though there was fruit from the last year, and even though we can don't we, can, don't we have still fruit, vegetable things we can from the previous year? Yet still, in that new year, Yah desires the first fruit. And it should be even more of abundance the next year, and the next year. Until it comes to a climatical phase that, you know, it's, it's just something that's more that we can comprehend right now, what Yahweh is going to do for the house of Israel. Yeah. But he says this, three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and I find none. He said, cut it down. Destroy it. Cut it down. Get rid of it. It's no good. He said, why? Why cover it to the ground? That's all right. And it says in verse 8, and he answered, and he answering said to him, Master, let alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it. This is an example of Yahshua HaMashiach. As Yahweh looked upon the house of Israel. And he has given us time. He has given us everything that we need. But yet, he has not found what he desired. In the, in the body of Israel, in the nation of Israel, yet our caretaker, that caretaker being Yahshua HaMashiach, he said, yet, Master, have mercy. Yet one more year. One more. Yet even though we come short conditions of Yahweh, yeah. and the wrath of Yahweh yet is kindled, yet Yahshua HaMashiach says, give them yet one more year. One more year. That I might work on this house, Almighty yeah. Yahweh. That I might continue to dig around the roots. Yeah. That I might continue to dung this tree. Yeah. Have not we been dung? Yeah. We've been dung. Hallelujah. Yahshua continually applies the dung. Yes. Does he not? Doesn't he show us the filthiness yes. and the wretchedness of the things that we produce and what we have? Yes. Does he not dig deep yes. in our living in our hearts to find that which is not acceptable unto Yahweh? Do not he continually warn us by his malak, by his, his messengers? Continually. Hallelujah. He said, let alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it. And he said, if it bear fruit, well, we must bear fruit. We must. It's paramount that we bear fruit. Why? Because in all that I read, what do we see happen to the fig tree that did not bear fruit? It was yes. destroyed. Yes. And he says this, and if not, then after that, you shall cut it down. I bless Yahweh. I told Yahweh that he has not cut us down. How sweet are you? He has not severed us. And he has not destroyed us. But yet, continuously, year by year, he digs around us. And what does he do? He dumb us. He reproves us. He rebukes us. He chastises us. That we can come to the maturity and the fluoration that Yah desires us. That we bring to him the abundance of 
the first fruit. Hallelujah. Of all his neighbors. And do about Yahweh for all things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, and then the paragraph I do want to, if not, uh, read bits and pieces as time is coming close. Concerning the fruit tree, and, and you can find this in in the um, the King James Version of the, the study scripture that we have and many of us have on our computers. And you can also find this in other booklets concerning this fruit tree. But it says here that around 1881, Anderson was writing about Yahshua. There was this person, this um, philosopher, if you will, that was studying um, the whereabouts of Yahshua where he, where he has traveled. And all this article is basically says concerning a certain fig tree. And it says this, um, a fig tree and withdrawing it without fruit, putting a curse upon the tree. That's why I just read. He warned his Call him his uh, apostles that if they did not bear fruit, so too they will be bearing as the tree. I just read that. What would happen if the tree did not bear fruit? Yeah. And according to it says Dr. Endersham, that Yahshua was tried and he was offered in the springtime, and the fig tree did not bear fruit until the early days of summer. This is according to his studies concerning this particular fruit tree. And the reason why I'm mean, injecting this with some somewhat interest, I don't believe we should understand this, concerning the maturity of the fruit on this particular fig tree. Yes. Um, let, me, let me move down a little bit. Okay. It says, finding one, he reached into the branches, this is concerning the fig tree, and drew his head out and found that there were it had, he had few leaves from the previous autumn or the previous year. Not only did it have some leaves, but also had some fruit. And some gray substances that looked like lagoons. It said Anderson saw out several pedestrians, those that was along the way, because he, he was not native to the land, until he found one that could speak German. And he was told that the little gray objects were edible, which was the fruit from the previous year, mm -hmm. that the traveler used them as to propose or to postpone the hunger pains of the hunger as they travel. So at this type of this certain part of the year, it had already bearing its fruit and it had the fruit had withered up. Until they could reach until they could reach an end. And it says unless you find those on the fig tree branches in the spring, he was told, the tree will not bear fruit in the summer. So it's important that those uh, objects or the fruit that was left in the previous year was left on the tree because it allowed it to bear fruit the next season. You, you, you with me? Okay. It says, so the overly thorough German scholar, he was a scholar, he wrote in his books of Yahshua, the life of the time of Yahshua HaMashiach, concerning this fig tree, different kinds of fig tree that the Yahudim called uh, Beth Shuach which were kind of white figs, not, not some of the figs that we see today that we have, but they were white figs that were not ripe until the third year. So it took three years for the tree to come to the maturity that it should bear fruit. And if we will look back, did not the, um, the, the ruler of the vineyard, when he come back, he said it's been three years, there should have been fruit, but it was not fruit. So Yah has given us our time house of Israel, Yah. We should have fruit. Yes. We should have fruit. Yes. We should have the, the abundance of Abba, Abba Yahweh to offer unto him. This tree put forth this fruit the first year which hung to the second year and were brought to perfection on the third year. Isn't that something? Yes. So that when it was three years old, it had fruit of the first, the second, and the third year. This being such a tree, by its being full of leaves, even others had none. Or were just putting out fruit of that one year. Or might have been expected on it, when it had none at all. And therefore was cursed. Or it might be one of the sort which was brought forth fruit twice a year. So we must be a people that year by year, continuously, step by step, day by day, yes, our fruit right. should be maturing. Yeah. Preserved and maturing, that we continually offer unto Yahweh yes. of the first yes. of our fruit. Yes. That it not be fruit that is withered, that is cankered, but fruit that is perfect. 
Hallelujah. Um, I want to continue in Jubilees chapter 7. Those of you that may not have this, I'm going to read 33 through 37 concerning some of the same things. But it's, we must understand the condition of Yahweh. We are washed by the dome of Yahshua, Hamashiach. Yes. We are cleansed by the dome of Yahshua. So even in our filth, there's no other way that we can be cleansed, that we may bring forth the fruits that are sent over unto Yahweh, yeah. but through Yahshua, Hamashiach. Yeah. Yeah. It says in Jubilees chapter 7, verse 33, for the earth will not be clean from the blood which has been shed upon it, for only through the blood of him that shed it will the earth be purified through all its generations. Have we not shed much blood yeah. on these grounds, our left, our heart? Yeah. And he said, and now my children listen, work judgment and righteousness, that you may be planted in righteousness over the face of the whole earth. So we must listen. We must shema house of Israel. Yeah. And we must work judgment and righteousness, as it says, that we may be planted in righteousness. That must be done for the house of Israel. Yeah. That we will be rooted and grounded in Yahweh, over the face of the whole earth. And your praises, it says, lift it up before Yahweh, our Almighty, who has saved us, saved me from the waters, of the flood. And we have truly been saved from the flood, yes. from the waters. Those things that would just drown us, condition of Yahweh. He lifted us up, hallelujah, above the waters. And it says this, and behold, you will go and build for yourself cities and plant in them all the plants that are upon the Olam. This is after the cleansing of the Olam. If you would, if you want to, you know, just go back and just read over Jubilees chapter 7. And moreover, all fruits bearing trees. Verse 36. It says, For three years, the fruit of everything that is eaten will not be gathered. And in the fourth year, its fruit will be accounted Kodesh, and will be offered the firstlings of the fruit. So we even see in this an example of a period of time. Yes, yes. In which there had to be a purification process. Why? Because there was blood that has been shed. Have we not shed innocent blood? Oh, yes. Yeah. But yet the dog of Yahshua has cleansed us. Yeah. Has washed us. Has purified us of this land. Of this body. That we be able to bring, it says, three years. But after a certain time. This is the time. Yeah. Where we shall offer unto Yahweh yeah. the first place of the first of our fruit. Yeah. This is the time. Yeah. Beautiful. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. First fruit unto Abba Yahweh. And he says this, I sat before the Most High Yah, who created the Shemaiah of the Olam and all things. He said, let them offer in abundance the first of the wine and the oil as the first fruits on the altar of Almighty Yahweh. Yeah. So yet we're still bringing this offering before Yahweh. Yeah. We've been washing the down of Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. Yeah. He has purified us. We're able to grow perfect fruit unto Abba Yahweh, that we can bring this offering unto him, who receives it, and what is left, he says, let the servants of the house of Yahweh eat it before the altar, which receives it. So it's important, conditions of Yahweh, yet there are stages that we must grow to the maturity, to the fullness of our potential, which that fullness is Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. And I brought Yahweh for Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Because he, all the lack, we have brought, yes. have been brought to par by Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. So in this time, let us bring forth the offering of Todah, yeah. the offering of praise, yeah. the fruit of sacrifice unto Almighty Yahweh, that he receives of this burning a sweet smell and savor unto the house of Israel. Yeah. Hallelujah. Isn't it Yahweh tongue? Yeah. His mercy, it endures forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to bring this into a close. House of Israel, y'all. Um, I still yet have quite a few scripture here. But I'm going to move. And I may, I, I would like to re revisit this once again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you would, let's turn to Yalkahana, John chapter 17, verse 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
I want to compare this because we know that it's time that Yahshua Hamashiach prayed unto the Abba. And one of the statements that he made was that all that you have given me, I have kept them by your name, Abba Yahweh. Yeah. So what Yahshua has kept the fruit of the labor, which is the house of Israel, that is us, yeah. in his lap, in this yeah. basket, and has preserved us. And it's presenting us an offering unto Almighty Yahweh, as we should present our baskets of fruit unto Almighty Yahweh. Yes. He has not lost any, except what did it, what did it say? It said, but the son of perdition. Yes. So if there's anything that is in us that is not of y'all, we must cast it off. Cast it off. Yeah. Cut it down. Yeah. It's not fruitful unto Almighty Yahweh. Yeah. Yachahana, John chapter 17, verse 1. He said, these words spoke Yahshua, and lift up his eyes to the Shemaiah and said, Abba, the hour has come. Magnify and honor your son. Yes. Excuse me? Yes. That your son also may be magnified and honor you. He said, as you have given him power over all flesh, that he should, should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. We have been given to Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. And this life eternal, that it might know you, the only true Abba Yahweh, and Yahshua HaMashiach, yeah. whom yeah. you have sent. Yeah. I have magnified out of you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have gave me to do. Yeah. And now, Abba, magnify and honor you me with your own self, with the splendor which I had with you, before the world was. Yes, yes. He said, I have manifest your name to the men which you have given me out of the world. We have been given to Yahshua HaMashiach. Yes. Yet we had to have been drawn by the Ruach of Almighty Yah. Yes. There's no one that can come to Yah or unto Yahshua except by the drawing of the Ruach of Almighty yes. Yahweh. Yes. These are his fruits. We are the fruit of Yahweh's labor. And Yahshua shall gather and will gather us at the end time. Yes. I manifest your name to men which you have given me out of the world. Yours they were. We are Yahweh's. Yes. And you gave them to me. Have not Yahweh given us much? Yes. Yes. Given us much conditions of Yahweh. And they have kept your word. Your Mishnah, your Torah. And they have known that all things whatsoever you've given me are of you. Do we know that? Yeah. All that has been given of Yahshua HaMashiach. We have been given unto Yahshua. Yes. That we are Yahweh. Yeah. We are the fruit of Yahweh's labor, of his harvest. Yeah. And have known surely that I have come from you. And they have believed that you did send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but pray for them which you have given me. For they are yours. And all mine are yours. And yours are mine. And he says this. And I, mag and I magnify and honor in them. Hallelujah. Yes. Don't you want Yahshua yes, yes, yes. to be magnified yes. and honored yes. in us? Hallelujah. In the fruit yes. of Yahweh's labor. Yes. Don't you know Yahweh desired the house of Israel Yah, to be perfect? Yes. Without blemish? Without any such thing. Yes. Hallelujah. So what have we brought? What do we have in our basket tonight? It's still not too late to have the fruit. It's still not too late to produce the fruit. The first fruit unto Almighty Yah. Hallelujah. I do pray that this message is an inspiration unto you, house of Israel. That as we have said before, as we come to this time, next year, that a maturity would well up in us, that we would grow to bring forth to Yahweh yes. a more abundant, a more perfect, mature first fruit Make unto yes, yes, yes. the offering, yes. unto the, the, um, the high priest Yahshua HaMashiach, that he may present it unto um, Almighty Yahweh. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. Yes. Isn't, hasn't Yahweh given us so many examples? If we just take the time and just look around ourselves. Yes. When we're in the garden, 
when we're picking fruit, when you're purchasing fruit, that this is a continual repetition of this example. That even when everything is said and done, if I may say, where all things are brought to the end, that Yahweh will gather of his first fruit, hallelujah, into his basket. What is that basket? The Melkut? The kingdom of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Yahweh yeah. Barak, y'all. I pray this message, this teaching, whatever you yeah. will call it, has been an inspiration to your love. And for us, that's to continue to labor how for Israel. For your labor will not be in vain as long as we labor for the things that are of Almighty Yahweh. And He will bless us. He will barak us. His Barakiah will pour out upon us in abundance fruit that may preserve the house even in time. In times of, of famine, in times of slack. Hallelujah. Let's all stand to our feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Almighty Yahweh, we do barak you. For that which you have given us, Yahweh, you have given us of the best of your fruit tonight, Abba Yahweh, which is your Torah, your Mishnah, unto the house of Israel. We do pray, Abba Yahweh, that we will meditate, that we will study, and that we will. Just take it, take heed, that we will show mark what you have taught, what you have spoken unto us this morning, Abba Yahweh. That we will allow it to seek down. You have plowed us tonight. You have dug around our roots tonight, Abba Yahweh. And you have dug us, Yah. And we will rock you for that, Abba Yahweh. For we know that as Yahshua continuously, the Word continuously to work on us, that we will bring forth, Yahweh, a harvest of abundance which is acceptable unto you. So we do give you told out when you ask you will take those that have come from far home tonight, Yahweh, that have come from near home, and those that are listening by via live stream, and you'll barack us all, and that you will give us tough rest on this Shabbat home. But all things we do will rock you, and in my name of Yahshua HaMashiach, we do cry out. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah, Yahweh! Hallelujah! Hallelujah.